Tax clans used to be a big thing in the Philippines. Young people would meet up with clanmates and generally just have a good time. My college classmates and I used to be addicted to those Tex clans. Three of us in one of the clans grew very close, Nina, Amanda, and myself. We were the ones who were very eager when there was an invitation that someone was treating us out. A live alert enthusiastic right away whenever we heard the word libre. Amanda got into a relationship with someone in our clan. She was inviting us to her place on an upcoming Saturday. That would be the first time that they'd be meeting, during the birthday of her boyfriend's nephew. Naturally, because we were still students during that time, our budgets were very tight and we didn't have the money to just go around willy-nilly. We declined the invitation since their place was quite far from ours. Our dismay of not being able to go was suddenly dissipated when we received a text from Amanda's boyfriend. He said that he'd pick us up from school and pay for our fares to and fro. We only had school up to 10 a.m. on Saturdays, which is why we really had the time to go and enjoy the free food at the birthday party of the nephew of Amanda's boyfriend. It was almost 3 p.m. when Amanda's boyfriend picked us up. They talked for a little bit before we went out to wait for a bus to ride to their place. We waited for over an hour to get one headed there. We were sitting at the waiting shed the entire time. There were also a few people waiting like us. But when a bus finally arrived and we were about to stand up to board it, Amanda's boyfriend stopped us. He said that we should ride the next bus instead. Nina and I were confused. We'd been waiting for quite a while and the bus wasn't even crowded at all. There was another bus that came, but we still didn't board. Three buses have already passed. We still didn't board. Nina was starting to get annoyed, so she said we were just going to go home if we weren't going to ride the next bus that came, because it was already getting quite late. On hearing this, it seemed like Amanda's boyfriend felt forced to stand up and hail the next bus that came, and we boarded it. We got off at the tricycle terminal. We accompanied him when he approached the driver and told him where we wanted to get dropped off. We saw how quickly the driver refused to take us there. One tricycle driver after another kept refusing to take us there until one driver had the balls to take us. Nina and I were pondering why the drivers were reacting that way when Amanda's boyfriend gave that location. We were thinking that there might be a swanks, monsters in Filipino. That's why the riders kept refusing to take us, laughing as they seemed to find a request very ridiculous. Amanda was in front while Nina and I were in the back, whispering to each other. The tricycle trip was quite long. It took at least 20 minutes. The road was very bumpy. There weren't many houses around too, but the driver finally stopped at a house where there was clearly a birthday party for a kid. We figured this is the place where his nephew was celebrating his birthday. As we were about to go in, he said this is as far as the driver would take us and that we'd have to walk the rest of the way in. That's when Nina and I really started to get paranoid. The driver's behavior seemed like he was determined to not go anywhere near that place, especially since it wasn't even that far from where he dropped us off. The hairs on my entire body stood on end when we finally reached Amanda's boyfriend's house. There were four old women seated around a giant walk thing that only contained water. Two old men were busy chopping wood to make the fire. This birthday party definitely takes the cake when it comes to the weirdest birthday party I've ever been to. I didn't see any kids, and all of them were old except for Amanda's boyfriend. They let us in and offered us water. As I was being handed a glass, I refused. Nina did the same. Nina and I looked at each other while shaking our heads. Amanda was just about to drink the water, but I took the glass and gave it back to the old woman and told her we weren't thirsty. She stared at me and told me that the party wasn't until 6 p.m. and that we should walk around their backyard and check out the coconut trees so that after we wandered around a bit, we would just be in time for the party. Amanda's boyfriend invited us to go out back. We were greeted by a wide fish pond. There wasn't any sign of coconut trees. Amanda's boyfriend said that the coconut trees were further out back. Nina and I were following behind. We were walking slowly, so we were several meters away from Amanda and her boyfriend. There wasn't a single house where we were walking, and we'd been walking for quite a while already, so we were feeling quite tired. Out of our impatience and exhaustion, 
We were shouting, are we there yet? Every now and then. Nina and I were already thinking of bad scenarios. We were thinking that maybe we were about to get ambushed at the end and get chopped into pieces. We also started getting scared. Which is why Nina suddenly started cursing loudly at Amanda's boyfriend, saying how he's been screwing with us. She pulled me to her and said that we were heading back. Amanda darted to us. It was already getting dark as it was almost 6 in the evening. Amanda's boyfriend also followed. He said that we should slow down so that we could get there at 6. Nina and I were feeling a mixture of annoyance and fear, which made us walk even faster. We were practically running at that point, as we felt really uneasy. It was around 5.30 when we reached their place. One of the old women met us and asked why we got back so early. We just made up a reason that we had to go use the bathroom. She pointed to it, and I went first because I actually really needed to go. I almost hurled when I got inside. The stench was horrible. It didn't smell of piss or crap. It smelled fishy. It smelled of the insides of meat. The toilet looked like it hasn't been used for long. It was covered in moss. Same with the walls and the floor, a mix of mud and moss. As I came out of the bathroom, the three of us went to the old women to tell them we were going home. They were still around the giant walk, the water in it already boiling. What made it weirder is that they didn't seem to have food anywhere near them that they will cook. At this point, we were really freaked out. We heard them calling us over. They said that it was almost six already and that the party was almost starting and that we should wait. But we didn't listen. We walked fast, not looking back once. We saw a tricycle dropping off someone a little ways away from their house. Very lucky. We started hailing it by shouting and we were able to get on. As the tricycle was driving off, one of the older women chased after us, along with Amanda's boyfriend, saying that we should come back next time at 6 instead. We politely responded okay and told the driver to go. We didn't talk to each other until we reached the exit. Surprisingly, the guy was driving really fast, almost as if we were being chased after. To this day, whenever I remember that, I still think about why they were insisting that we stay until 6.